Hi, Anne. It's so lovely to have you today. Thank you for taking the time to talk. Um, I, I've worked with women for a long time and, and preparing them for birth, but I know the next big journey is around lactation. So I'm really keen to learn a bit from you today. Um, do you want to just introduce yourself, Anne? Hey, Tracy. Thank you for having me today. Um, yes, you're right. So my name is Anne. Um, I'm originally from Germany and I have been a midwife for many years, so to be exact, about 23 years. Um, and I always have worked with women um, when they were pregnant, during birth, postnatally. And about five years ago, I set my exam to become an internationally certified lactation consultant. So we moved to ACT about four and a half years. And I decided to serve the women in a private business capacity as a lactation consultant again, because I could see there is a big need here. Mm. Oh, you're so right, Anne. And with a, a, what I'm noticing with my families is there's a lot of um, um, hit and miss support after they've had their baby. And that's one of the biggest feedback that I get from my family. So having somebody that they can call on to help them with lactation is just absolute gold. So I'm so glad you're out there helping women. Um, yeah. Can you tell me what are the typical challenges that women experience once they've had their babies and, and establishing good breastfeeding? Yeah, sure. I mean, look, I see women at various stages in their breastfeeding journeys. So I would say the majority, around 80% of women who I see um, are possibly in that time between birth and about eight weeks after they had their baby. But I also see women much later on in their journeys. Um, so and the, the issues or the concerns why women call me usually um, we vary obviously accordingly. So in the early days, it might be that they're worried about how the baby's latching or the baby's weight gain, um, or breastfeeding might be painful. Um, a bit later, it might be that they have a drop in milk supply. And then again, um, much later, they might have babies that are teething. And so obviously breastfeeding might be uncomfortable or also I see women sometimes when they actually want to end the breastfeeding journey. So it could be years later, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow, that's great. Um, there's, I've noticed, Dan, over the years that there's been a real move towards women buying breast pumps and doing a lot mm. of expressing both, both pre-birth and also after. Can you tell mm. us a little bit about that? Yeah, so look, um, certainly um, the recommendation is often that women start to try to hand express before they had their baby, you know, and that um, there is a... Historically, that came from women who have a high risk pregnancy and might have a risk that they may need that expressed colostrum in the early days. Um, and I'm certainly for educating women how to. Um, but I also see that women already are buying really expensive pumps um, before they even have a baby. And I understand that there are situations where women indeed need that, you know. So for example, let's say if women know they will go back to work very early on, then a breast pump can be very useful. Or for example, a woman who has a preemie baby might see herself um, trying to maintain her supply by really expressing very regularly. So what I'm trying to say, I suppose, is there are situations where a breast pump can be really handy but I also believe that we shouldn't forget that breastfeeding doesn't have to be that complex, right? So the main thing in a breastfeeding journey is at one hand, a mother who wants to breastfeed and a baby who should be breastfed or could be breastfed. And then obviously we have also the role of the partner and the family in that, you know? So if women were, how would a woman know that she's having difficulties with breastfeeding and does need that support? What are the sort of signs that she could pick up on? Yeah, I mean, again, so going back to what do I see, why women engage in my care or in, you know, possibly with other providers um, is when breastfeeding is obviously painful. That's a very common one because you know, that can be really disheartening and it can be really stressful. Um, then obviously if babies um, have some issues in gaining weight, you know, we like to actually explore that a little bit. Um, but in general, if um, a baby is born at term, it's healthy, you know, it's behaving normally, um, it's putting on the weight well, then often the main symptoms a woman will observe and naturally women do observe their babies they cast their eyes over 
the little people so much um, is usually that women will come back and they say something isn't right and they can't always put their finger what's not right mm -hmm. um, and I'm really passionate that women don't need to know what's not right you don't have to be the professional you can trust your gut feeling but possibly a few symptoms that women can just kind of try to observe for and I, I always teach that woman is how do you know that your baby's doing well so it's the simple thing so a simple thing is um, obviously has your baby put on the weight um, after birth quite well that's great um, have you actually felt that the baby's quite relaxed after feed well that's a great thing a great thing to observe um, another thing is does the baby look well you know, does a baby look content? Is it pink? Is it warm? Does it have a good tone or is it rather lethargic? You know, so there's a few things and I try to empower women to understand what is a, how does a well baby look like? Mm -hmm. um, so then they can actually differentiate if it doesn't, you know. Um, a very good one is also to observe baby's output. So there's a certain amount of ways and who's a baby who's breastfeeding should have, and that can be a good indicator. Um, but by all means, it's mainly going back to, as a woman, or even, you know, as parents, if you feel something isn't 100% um, with your baby, just make sure you engage with somebody, because it's not worth sitting there and worrying about your baby, but rather engage somebody, and sometimes it's little things that we can point out. It's not always something traumatic, but certainly it's worth to get in contact and, you know, get your baby checked out. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Um, where would a woman find lactation support? Like what sort of options are there? Yeah, there's quite a few options. So obviously, um, depending on the personal circumstances and also depending where she might already be linked in with, um, she has several options. So yep, she can engage a a private lactation consultant and in ACT we have a, a really good range of us, you know, we have a lot of great support around and most of us are listed on the Elkins web website which is LCANZ um, and that means the Elkins website that's actually lactation consultants who have gone through a certain credentialing process then also some of well actually all of the hospitals have lactation consultants in their own rhymes um, then they also have some private midwives working in the community they can engage um, not all of them are lactation consultants but certainly very experienced midwives um, then community child health um, they have a good range of practitioners working for them. And last but not least, um, one of my favorites is Australian Breastfeeding Association. Mm. Um, they are a fabulous uh, support network for women virtually, um, not just in ACT, but Australia wide. And they do so many good things like education. They have a 24 hour hotline, which is amazing. They also do peer to peer support and also have a really fabulous website. Mm. Oh, that's great. The Australian Breastfeeding Association were fantastic when I was having my children. Mm. It was lovely being around mm. women who were normalising breastfeeding for me and, and helping me to overcome some of the challenges. So, yeah, I love those community groups. They're fantastic. How would people find you, Anne? Because I'd like to know how they could find Yeah, sure. You. Mm. Yeah, so obviously um, I try to have a little bit of a presence online so they can just go on my website, which is www.breastfeedinghelponline.org. They also can find me on Facebook under Breastfeeding Help or if they put in Breastfeeding Help Canberra, I come up as well. And uh, that's possibly the easiest way to get in contact. Beautiful. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. And um, yeah, I, I think you've highlighted some of the, the challenges that women can experience, but there is support there. And I think reaching out for support earlier and not feeling like you have to do it all on your own can make a big difference. So thanks for your time, Anne. It's been really good. Yeah, thank you so much for, your, for having me today, Tracy. It was lovely.